بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى ask him send peace and blessings on his beloved and beloved سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم it's lesson five of the حقيقة ورابعهم خير البرية بعدهم علي حليف الخير بالخير منجح just turn my mobile off as well just so we're not disturbed Anas and the fourth of them was the best of creation after them Ali the companion of goodness through goodness he was successful um so we last week we covered the first three khalifas and we are covering sahaba radiyallahu anhum and I'll explain in a moment why that is ex- ex- important to aqida right you probably generally consider this something to be related to seerah or history but actually it's an aqida issue because they're not just any people they're the companions of the last and the seal and the greatest of all messengers our prophet sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so um ali radiyallahu anhu he was ali bin Abdi, abi talib bin abdul muttalib uh, ibn hisham he was the uh, cousin uh, paternal cousin of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam his father and abu talib his ali radiyallahu father rasulullah's father they were brothers um also in the um on after hijra the brother brotherhood brotherhood pact that was made between two uh, people in this case when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was made to um, ali radiyallahu anhu um it's there is a narration that he's the first one to become muslim um uh, imam hanifa rahimahullah says that abu bakr radiyallahu anhu was the first man and khadija radiyallahu anha was the first uh, woman and ali radiyallahu anha was the first child he was about 10 years old at the time uh he's abu al-hasanain the father of the two hasans abu hasan and hussein radiyallahu anhuma um and his manaqib and his statuses in knowledge and um piety and uh judiciary judicial and you know there's so many that whole books are, as each of these people the whole books are written upon them uh their their biography in their life um he was from the imams from the imams and authorities of the muslims he was the fourth khalifa as explained last week that the majority view is that he's the fourth best in the order of khil according to order khil although some of you hold him to be more virtuous than said uthman radiyallahu anhu but uh the majority view is that ali radiyallahu anhu as per the tartib of the the, the order of the khilafa he was also the um the fourth um Uh, in virtue as well after the killing of usman shahad usman radiyallahu anhu the many fitan opened up um and uh, came to being um the and the first sort of like thing that maybe opened up the door was the, the stern hand of umar radiyallahu anhu when he became shaheed that was a door that broke which opened up many uh it, it, people um that came after uh were different from the after the Abu Bakr and Umar radiyallahu anhu's time it's a different era so even in the Khulafa Rashidin era although personally they are but as Abu Bakr and Umar radiyallahu anhu were different uh, status and Hussein Osman Ali radiyallahu anhu were different status definitely less so than the first two and that doesn't take anything away from them in terms of their you, you know you could say like the brightest stars in the sky and some are less slightly less brighter than the others but Sayyidina Usman radiyallahu anhu Sayyidina Umar radiyallahu anhu's killing as what shahad as well that opened up certain think people were not um as he was and also Allah had given him something that uh, others were not given and um and then Sayyidina Usman radiyallahu anhu's shahad as well that added the, the 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 people that um you know they the, the, after Sayyidina Usman radiyallahu anhu fitin came and affected even the sahaba of the lawn in the sense of that there was differences between them and you know it, it there was great harm to say ali radiyallahu anhu personally um uh in his time he was the most deserving of the khilafa so the haq with him he is the mujtahid that is said to have got it right um due to many dalils and you know rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's there's indication there's the view that um ammar ibn yasir uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told ammar yasir was in the ranks of um ali radiyallahu anhu in the battles that happened between the army of ali radiyallahu anhu and muawiyah radiyallahu anhu that um and muslims the two you know uh, there's a disagreement 
it's a long if you, you can go very deep into it I asked my father um, about this and I used to read too much on this stuff and basically like when you put it all together it's almost it's a deadlock on one side you have a group that demands justice on the other side one is trying to establish the rule of law and proper uh, governance uh, which is the an Islamic government which is the Khalifa exercising authority to establish um, his right of rule which he was deserving and then you have this other very strong um, uh, uh, people that are from Sham who are uh, Sayyidina Mu'awir radiallahu and support Sayyidina Mu'awir radiallahu anh. and so, so one of the Dalil's indication to who is there's a, a hadith a well known hadith that that the the rebellious group will kill um, Ammar ibn Yasir who, and who happened to be in the army Ali radiallahu anh. so from that some people I was reading on this a little bit earlier and um just give me one moment. Yeah, so Rasulullah Sallallahu said base to Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu that they, the group that will kill him uh, will be the rebellious group. Now, what someone, um, you have to be very careful with this narration. Um, in terms of that f trying to fit this hadith on the... Um, because Muawiyah radiallahu anh, when this hadith was mentioned to him, he said, well, they brought him to the battlefield, so they're the cause of his death, right? But also, um, and Ali radiallahu anh, like, uh, you know, he um, had word to say uh, about that as well, because uh, when he heard that, what he said. Um, And he said that, um, and, and, and because if, when you say that there's a group, then the hadith and, you know, also tells us of that group that, um, one group is calling to Jannah and the other one's calling to the fire. But if you look at Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they are Sahaba companions of the same Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and they're brothers, they're mu'mineen. Right? So what is this group referring to? Obviously referring to a group within this a group that, uh, went out of its way uh, to specifically kill the companion, that companion and other companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Um, and, and in a way, they sort of like covered themselves in the group. And they were, you can say conspirators, you can say um, people that were, um, did not have goodwill towards the Muslims in general and wanted to fight and they were looking for uh, trouble. And you see that today as well in groups that you have like a group, but within the group, you'll have an element that is not even the group it can't control. Um, and, um, and they will say things that yeah, in Urdu, uh, there's a saying that, that the student, the disciple goes beyond the teacher even, like goes beyond the limits. So, um, so this hadith cannot be fitted on Mu'awir radiallahu anhu, right? Um, and the Imams have discussed uh, on this, Mu'awir radiallahu anhu, the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, meaning they're with him. Um, Wallahu alam. Like that's the um, uh, the 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 long and short of, um, you know, you can go into the detail of this. But I, when I asked my father, Rahmullah, about this, he says Qadr, Allah's Qadr. Like how can it happen? He said it's Qadr. Like every all good and bad is from Allah. We think good and bad is Allah is how much food you eat and how much air you breathe and how much lifespan you have. It's also the circumstances that will come upon you in life. These are also written for you. Your level of intelligence is also written. 
right? As a hadith mentions that how much your intelligence is, is also part of your qadr. It's a part of your destiny. Allah has written a certain amount, portion of intelligence, wealth as well. Also, the, not just the, the amount of power that you have, but, um, and this is the dilemma of Ali radiallahu anhu. He was supported by people in Iraq who didn't back him up all the way. Well, people of Sham backed Mu'awir radiallahu anhu. So he had a very, he had a legitimate ruler, but who was in a weaker position. And he had a, a, a ruler who uh, opposed him, especially on the death of Usman radiallahu anhu. He wanted, he had a right as a relative of Usman radiallahu anhu. How can we just go back to normal when there's killers of Usman out and about and they're hidden in the army of Ali radiallahu anhu. We have to weed them out and so forth. It created the deadlock and a situation. But these situation also, the ahwal, the situation they also come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, anyway, um, you know, and Ali radiallahu anhu, when, he, when Muammar radiallahu anhu did interpretation to defend himself, because he wasn't, he never wanted uh, to be the person, like they didn't want, he didn't want the, this to happen to come to blows like this. Um, but they had very strong feelings and very strong motives for uh, driving them to the position that they'll take up arms. You have to understand, these are not people that are sitting by and all of a sudden decided to take arms in a, a Sahaba radiallahu just think about this, Sahaba radiallahu the whole fight, they, the whole life they've been in jihad. I mean, if you think about it, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh, these are governors and the conquests are coming and armies are on the move out of Medina all the time, right? These are uh, seasoned veteran soldiers, right? And governors and they're leading armies and sending armies, co commanding armies directly. Right, the likes of Amr ibn Asa radiallahu all these Sahaba radiallahu if you look at them, the Ashram al Sharim al Jannah and so forth, what they are doing, they're governors or they are leading armies, they're going to jihad fighting, they are. So, you, you, like we're thinking this is brothers in the mosque and they just decided to go against each other. It's not like that. And, and they, they backed up their actions with their lives by putting their lives at risk by going into battle. They had standing armies constantly. So, I, I think like it, it's very hard sometimes for us to picture. When we sanitize the Sahaba radiallahu in the sense of sanitize, I mean like we remove the reality of their life, right? I mentioned before that Sahaba radiallahu in Ansar had a fight and there were three rocks at each other and Rasul them came. But they have to understand the type of men. Firstly, they were men. They were very strong men. They were combatants for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with that comes certain characteristics and certain things that people, if you know soldiers, if you know in your family, maybe soldiers and army people, they're very different, in my opinion, my experience with seeing, uh, meaning soldiers, their demeanor is very different uh, from the, uh, it's not just the training, it's like a whole, it's a whole psychological profile, especially if they've been in the army a long time, if they're veterans and they've been there, and especially if they've seen action, right? So uh, I think like you have to, we have to be understanding that how can they, how can they go to a fight? Well, they're fighting all the time anyway. Uh, in the sense for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was just another cause for them, both sides, that they will uh, lay their life for the haq, what they both believe to be haq, right? They've been fighting for haq for decades now by this point, right? We're talking about the third end of the third decade, right? So it's a long time. It's after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The end of the third decade after Rasulullah We're talking about nearly the getting close to, you know, the mid-30s, you know, um, uh, you know, near mid thirties, like the three, for the, in the four decades in jihad started, right? For many of the Sahaba, they'd be participating in the first battle in Badr, right? So you're talking about 33 something, 34 years, right? They've been fighting. So, and conquest and conquest. So it's a very different, um, maybe uh, a world. We might be projecting our sort of pacifist. Uh, um, world that we might have supposedly. I mean, it's very sanitized for us. So we then we project that maybe back onto them. I hope you understand what I'm saying. That it's. Um, uh, I don't want to, you to take it the wrong way in the sense of that. Oh, Sahaba radiallahu in. They were like brutes or something like that. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you're dealing with men who are soldiers and generals, and then in the mix of that, there is this thing that's happened now, and a murder has happened. An assassination has happened. And the family member who's the most powerful of that family is Sayyidina Mu'awir radiallahu on one side. And Sayyidina Ali radiallahu who has right to claim the Khilafah as per the norms of Khilafah and so forth. Now there's a dilemma here that's called a deadlock. And sometimes, and like I said, these deadlines, when I talk to my father, I try to 
you know, and always, of course, in this, we careful how far we go in discussing this. This is a classroom format, so we can discuss a little bit, but just to uh, pull out some of the threads and um, try to understand it without going too much into because we don't have the time for that. So, um, uh, Omar ibn Aziz, rahmatullahi the tabi'i, he came later in the Banu Umayyah, several khalifas after um, this whole incident. He said, someone in the majlis talked badly or talked, critiqued, you know, the Sahaba. He said, he stopped them. He said, these, they have passed away and they will reap the reward of what they did or the sin. If there is any sin on them, they, that's with them. You will be asked about what you do, right? Uh, we have been sl saved from blooding our swords, so we should not dirty our tongues, right? So Ali radiallahu anhu, um, in 40 after Hijri of Shaheed in Iraq, um, the Khariji of the Rahman ibn Muljim, uh, Ibn Muljim, uh, he was known to be his great worship. And, um, you know, uh, they planned Khawarij, they, they planned their solution to their differences between, there will always be a third group that will come out. Um, in, in, you know, when there's two warring, when there's two disagreement, there'll be a, like a neutral group will come out always. Then there'll be a, a, you know, another extreme version of those groups will come out. They said, well, the solution is that we just kill all these groups. Like we just wiped out their leadership. So we should kill them. Ali radiallahu anhu, we should kill Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, we should kill Amr al-As. They failed in killing Muawiyah and Amr al-As. They succeeded in killing Ali radiallahu anhu, which make him shaheed. And this is the, like, really is like a, Ibn Muljim was a, like a real demented sociopath, like a, a psychopath, like I don't know how to explain, but, um, you know, he, he was from the most wretched uh, of people that he killed the best person that that time in life in the world. And think about that, the greatest, most pious person, knowledgeable person. And he used to pray so much salah, I was also told about the khawarij. You see these people, that they were, they were, their Quran and salat. I mean, just think about this. When Ibn Abbas, you can read this in Tablis Iblis of Ibn Jawzi, Alhamdulillah, in his Tablis Iblis, uh, The Devil's Deception. The, I think the first section is about Khawarij. Just read about that. You all see, you probably remember people, I don't know how old you guys are, but you remember some people you probably met in your life that have a very similar uh, uh, bent in their ideology or thinking in your life. And I'm not talking about a specific group. I'm talking about there's people like this in every group that have this sort of weird so he said, Ibn Abbas, and like you read about them, you read there's this, their, their, their craziness, their intensity was amazing, like shockingly to a point of Ibn Abbas, the, 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 the monk of this ummah, the father of tafsir, when he was sent as an ambassador into the camp, right, on the, his request, because he had some friends there. And when he went into the camp and he saw the ibadah, he felt the, um, like, can you imagine you're a companion of the Prophet, cousin of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you go into the camp of the Khawarij and you feel an inferiority complex in, in terms of looking at, when you see the ibadah, you feel like a, a lacking in yourself. Rasul said that, you will see, you'll be impressed by their Salat and Quran. But like an arrow, they'll come in Islam and leave the Islam, you know. So um, the, the, the devil deceived them. Um, and uh, the shaitan deceived them. The Iblis, Iblis deceived them. Um, you know, the most wretched Rasulullah Sallallahu told Ali Ridhalan, he was that how, and he, that's how it happened. Um, and he'll be hit for Rasulullah Sallallahu you were hit here and you'll bleed from your beard. Well, that's what happened. That's where he struck him at Fajr time. Um, so at Salatul Fajr, in the dark, he attacked Ali Ridhalan, Um And he called out before he died. He said, if I die, kill him. If I live, I'll be his judge. Um, of course, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, the next day or two, he passed away. And his, uh, the, the, even the Muljib's hands were cut, his tongue. He said, do not cut my, they cut his arms and legs off. And then he said, do not cut my tongue because I make dhikr of Allah. I mean, it's such a strange, what a strange thing to say. Um, what a strange thing. To, like, he just killed the best person in the world. The son in law of Rasulullah sallallahu the cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu Right. The strange thing is the Nusayriya, what we know as the Alawis, right? They're called actually Nusayris. That's actual real name. Only recently they sort of adopt this Alawi name to make the Nisra to Ali. But the reason why that they, they, they worship Ali Radilan and they praise Ibn Muljim and others in history as well that 
Uh, why? Because in, if they believe Ali is God, then Ibn Muljim freed him from his, in their mind, I mean, look at the twisted and uh, demented their mind is, that they believe that he fe fe freed God from the physical uh, restrictions of the human body. So, I mean, this is darkness upon darkness. Um, and finally, his grave, I say, Ali radiallahu anh, what they say is a grave in Mashhad is not really his grave. His grave is unknown, right? I think in Mazar Sharif in Afghanistan, some people say nobody actually knows the actual location of his grave. Uh, it's a mystery, right? It was hidden. He was buried, but he was hidden from everybody. And you can see why, for obvious reasons, you know, they, um, uh, the, what, what happens? Um, uh, those are the group about whom there is no doubt that they will be upon the great rides of Firdaus roaming about eternally. So Rahat is uh, mentioned here is a group between three to ten. So now it's talking about the remaining Asharam um, Basharim Jannah, the ten that are promised Jannah as for the Hadith of Rasulullah Sallam. Nujub refers to uh, rides, Nujub of Firdaus. Firdaus is Jannah, the highest and the best of Jannah, the center of Jannah. It's the it, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when you ask for Jannah, ask for Firdaus Al-Ala, the highest, Firdaus, the highest, the loftiest. So we ask for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah bless us with Firdaus. And in that, these ten they will be riding uh, on the uh, uh, the rides of um, Firdaus. Now, what the reality of that is, can, we cannot imagine. But you can see human beings, they have a obsession or a fondness Allah has built into us for nice clothes, nice um, jewelry, uh, nice rides, right? Even Rasulullah, he, I think Abu Talha is a horse, Inna uh, Bahra, or something like Kanna Bahra, some. Like it, like he took his horse back. Like if it's a fast horse, he said, "Oh, it moves like the sea. Like it's a smooth ride. Like he enjoyed the ride himself." Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, uh, human beings have uh, a love for um, good cars. You see that today as well. Human beings. One of the sheikh in Pakistan in the '90s, uh, I heard him say, "He passed away." Rahmullah. He was saying that '97. Um, I heard this from him. He said. Um, I never thought that it was an old sheikh. He said, I never thought that men like jewelry, because you hear in the hadith, there'll be bangles on people, you know, right up to the person's, um, what do you call it? Um, to their elbow. And he said, I didn't make sense to me because it's a strange thing, especially in the subcontinent culture, you know, the ladies put the bangles. So he goes like men, like it's like until he said watches came out and he said, then I saw men doing this. They will pull up their sleeve and show their watch to everybody. I see, he said, then I realized, oh, men also have this attraction to something. Uh, to beautify their uh, wrists uh, as well. So there are versions in this dunya of things that uh, Allah has created. So we like smooth rides. We like nice rides. We like beautiful. We like road presence, so to say. So in Jannah, uh, there's a group. I mentioned these people will be on these uh, transports or rides. The reality of that is, uh, you know, not everybody loves a Ferrari. Look in a Ferrari. Or I'm not sure if you guys do, but uh, everybody loves a Ferrari. Everybody loves a Lamborghini. Um, you know, people, kids, they uh, like it. Like sort of instinctively, they boys incline towards uh, beautiful cars. Um, Sa'id wa Sa'ad wa ibn Awf wa Talha wa Amir wa Fihriz wa Zubayr mumaddahu. Sa'id and Sa'ad ibn Awf and Talha, Amir of Fihr. And Zubair, the praiseworthy. Of course, this is talking about the um, the Ashram Bashar in Jannah. So, Jannah. So, the remaining six, right? We covered the four Khalifas and the six others. Sa'id ibn Zayd, uh, ibn Amr ibn Nawfal. He meets at Umar uh, ibn Nawfal. Umar ibn Khattab uh, is Umar ibn Khattab ibn Nawfal. Uh, sorry, Nufail. Nufail. Um, uh, So Omar is the, um, the the son of his uncle's uh, um, uh, is a son of his uncle's um, father, right? So um, did I get that right? Yeah. So um, Saeed Ibn Zaid is probably the least known of the Ashari Mashan of Ashari in Jannah. Uh, very few hadiths are narrated from him. Uh, he died in 51 after Hijrah. Um, his kunya was Abu al-Awar. Uh, he was a brother-in-law of Khattab. So as we read in, um, what do you call it? Um, um, 
you probably read in books about the story of Umar ibn Khattab became Muslim. When he came into his sister father ibn Khattab, his brother-in-law, that's his brother-in-law there. So they're the reason why Umar Adilana became, uh, you could say, Muslim. Um, I'll read to you a little bit. Um, someone has written on Sayyid ibn Zayd. So just so you know, because there's not much written to him, even Dr. Mutlaq in his dars doesn't say much about him. So he was Sayyid ibn Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl. Was a very special Sahabi and the son of a very. This is from the Jamiat Ulama in South Africa. Someone has put up this in uh, KZN. Uh, you can find it. it says put Sayyid and Zayd KZN or Jamiat. So someone put an article. Zayd was a nephew of Al Khattab, the father of Umar Adilani. He was a man who understood that some, something was amiss with the Quraysh in Makkah and uh, and the idol worship. He rejected shit. This is the the father. So Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufail didn't actually worship idols. He rejected shirk at an early age and consistently argued against his people about the idol worshipping until Khattab persecuted him and beat on him. Zayd then went to other places to try to find the truth. Zayd passed away before Rasulullah received revelation. Zayd ibn Zayd asked Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about his father and his situation. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, I have seen on the day of judgment that when every nation stands before his prophet, uh, Sayyid bin Zayd bin, uh, bin Amr bin Nawfil will be standing as a nation on his own. Subhanallah. He will come, he's not a prophet, but he will come as a nation, as Ummah in his own right. Sayyid radiallahu anh, accepted Islam right from the beginning at the age of 19. He married Fatim ibn Khattab, the sister of Umar radiallahu who's someone who loved, uh, he, Sayyid loved service. He loved to serve with Rasulullah sallallahu He loved the feeling of dust on his face and to work. He said that to witness a battle alongside Rasulullah sallallahu to have dirt covering your face and to be in the heat of the battle is more beloved than living a lifetime of good deeds even if you live the life of Nuh alayhi salam. He witnessed every battle alongside Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi except for the battle of Badr. He and Talha bin Ubaidullah were sent to Al-Salam, uh, sorry, Al-Sham, to scout where the Quraysh was attacking from. By the time they made it back to the Muslim, the battle of Badr had been completed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi still counted them among the veterans of Badr. Sa'id radiallahu had a reputation, even though Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu was time for being the man who always charged first in battle. He was Qadir, uh, Qa'idur Fursan, the head of the knights in most battles. He can only, you can only imagine when the Muslims are usually outnumbered and a very low situation, how much fearlessness and courage was needed to be the first one to charge. Like he was always the one, the first one to take off against the enemy. Sayyid al served in the battle of Yarmouk under Khalid bin Walid and was one of the fiercest battles that the Muslims had. Khalid bin Walid appointed Sayyid as the center of the army in Yarmouk. And that day Sayyid called out to Abu Ubaid bin Jarrah and said, Ya Abu Ubaidah, I have become determined to become a martyr today. What would you like to tell Rasulullah if I meet him? Abu Ubaidah said, if you see Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, give him my salam and give the salam to the Muslim and say to him, Ya Rasulullah, may Allah Sallallahu Alaihi reward you on your behalf and we have found that our Lord has promised to, to be, what our Lord had promised us is true. He was referring to the spread of Islam all over the world. Sayyid said, on the day that fear was, on that day fear was removed from his heart. Although he was determined that day for a shahada, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to survive Yarmouk. Sayyid radiallahu anh was responsible for the army that went to Damascus. Umar radiallahu also appointed him as the governor of Damascus. A man like Sayyid bin Zayd who had served his entire life. He was, he was used to being covered in dirt and in the battlefield felt out of place in his new position. Damascus at the time was a very developed society. It had high buildings, beautiful gardens. It was known for its progress and affluence. Sayyid radiallahu anh lived in a, in a palace for three months and he walked to the balcony, look at and say, I don't want this. This is not what I have, this is not what I love doing. I love being in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sent a letter to Umar radiallahu wrote, Oh ya Amir al I'm not going to leave this struggle to, uh, to you and the rest of the companions while I sit in this palace. Whenever you receive this, say, know that I'm on my way to you and send to the, this post someone to whom this post is more befitting. Sayyid radiallahu did not want luxury. He wanted to be in the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyid radiallahu could have chosen to serve from a palace but chose to spend the rest of his life in service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In 673 after Hijrah, uh, uh, sorry, uh, CE, um, Sayyid radiallahu anh passed away. He prayed uh, Salat al-Fajr at the masjid one morning, returned home and passed away during his nap. Sayyid bin, uh, Sa'id, Sa'id bin Abi Waqas and Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu with the Sahaba who performed Sayyid's ghusl. Both of them gave give the candle. Whenever they perfumed the body of Sayyid, they found that his body already had the sweetest of smells. It was as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was saying to Sayyid radiallahu that his service had been accepted. So just, so I hope that um, enlightens us, inshallah, in knowing more about uh, this great companion who's from the 10 that's promised Jannah, but we don't generally know too much about him. The next name is mentioned, Saad, the well-known general of the Muslims, Saad ibn uh, Abi Waqas, uh, ibn Malik, ibn Wahhab, or Uhaib, uh, ibn Abdul Manaf, ibn Zuhra. So it was a Zuhri in terms of the clan of Quraysh. 
um, he meets Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at uh, Zuhra ibn Kilab. Um, on the mother's side, he said, Rasulullah, this is my khal, this is my uncle, like maternal uncle. Sayyid ibn Qas ibn Wahab and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course, who is the son of Amir ibn Wahab, Wahab, um, Wahab and Wuhayb were brothers. Hence, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say, Hada khali, this is my uncle, this is my maternal uncle. When he looked, uh, would look at Saad, so let one of you show me his khal, and let, let one of you show me his maternal uncle. Um, he was the last of the 10 to die in 55 after Hijrah. Abdurrahman ibn Auf uh, is the next person mentioned, Ibn Auf, meaning Abdurrahman ibn Auf, uh, Abdul uh, Har ibn Abdul Haris uh, ibn Zuhra. Uh, he meets his Sa'ad radiallahu anhu Zuhra. Um, uh, he was um, from the senior Sahaba radiallahu anhu, he's a trader. He died in 32 after Hijrah. Talha ibn Ubaidullah ibn Uthman ibn Sa'ad ibn Taym. Uh, so this is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's clan. Uh, Talha al Khair, Rasulullah Sam called him Talha al Fayyad because of many good things that he's done, um, good works. He was killed as a Muslim in the Battle of the Camel, 36 of the Hijra, killed with the opposition. Amir Fihr, um, uh, Amir Fihr refers to Abu Baida. His name was uh, Amir ibn Abdullah ibn al Jarrah ibn Hilal ibn Uhayb or Wahab ibn Dabba ibn Haris ibn Fihr. He meets Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he has many fadail. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Aminu had al ummah the trustworthy, the one, the trust of the, tr the one, the, the trustworthy or the one that Amana is kept with of this ummah. Uh, he died in the, the famous Ta'un, the plague of Amwasa. Plague is a contagious disease that spreads. Um, it's got specific characteristics. Um, in 18 after Hijrah, um, he was the first of the 10, uh, the Asham Bashar to die. Zubair ibn Bawa after Abu Bakr Siddiq obviously. Uh, Zubair ibn Awam ibn Khwailid, the next is Zubair. Um, Khwailid ibn Asad ibn Abdul Uzza ibn Qusay. That's where he meets with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's clan. He's from the Asadiyun, uh, from Bani Asad. Um, he died in South Damascus, Southern Damascus. There's a place called Mada, the, the uh, place of Zubair, or it's, it's, some say it's Old Basra, 36 after Hijra. Um, uh, and the hadith are many about the ten specifically in their virtue uh, like Abu Bakr is in Jannah Umar is in Jannah and on and on till the end um, and interesting enough that Abu Bakr Adilano, Usman, Sa'ad, Talha, Abdurrahman Zubair, these five were brought by Abu Bakr Siddiq Radiallahu they became Muslim Abu Bakr Siddiq Radiallahu um, so they're all, whatever they done so five of the ten are in the scale, whatever they do will be in the scale of the deeds of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. وَقُلْ خَيْرَ قَوْلٍ فِي الصَّحَابَةِ كُلِّهِمْ وَلَا تَكُوا تَعَانًا تَعِيبُ وَتَجْرَحُ And speak with the best terms about the companions of all of them and do not you be one who speaks ill of them, pointing out their faults and criticizing. So this is very, very uh, important. Um, this is the main the slide from the actual poem today, the last slide, and then there's another slide that which is some additional lines that are not there in the original poem, but they've been added later on by other authors. Um, but in regards to Sahaba radiallahu anhu, it's important for Aqeedah. The Ashram and Bashar Jannah is, they've been um, uh, excluded from the rest of the companions. By them being told, we've been told for us, they're the best of the best of the best, right? If Abu Bakr radiallahu is the best after the Anbiya, the four are the best out of the rest of humanity and Sahaba radiallahu anhu, then the ten are the best out of the whole of Sahaba and uh, like, so the circle gets bigger and bigger. But that the ten are in a special category, they're people that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said they're in Jannah, this in Jannah. So all ten are special and you can see they're very different. Their lives are very different. They're all companions. They have very different characteristics. They have very different priorities, right? Of course, the Rida of Allah is ultimate and they practice the whole of deen, but then they're so dynamically different. And Abu Bakr is so different from Umar radiallahu um, But you have these 10 people that are an all muhajireen and they're all from Sabiqun al Awalun, right? They're really from the early Muslims. Umar radiallahu became Muslim a bit later. But if these 10 people are like very unique people that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam trained over his lifetime and brought them to Medina Munawwara. And then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says about them that each one of these 10, and these are like cream of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's efforts. And they're like the gold standard, like among Sahaba Radiallahu Anhu, they are the model, because when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, this is from Jannah, this is Jannah, look at their life, 
Look at what they've done day and night for the last 10, 10 20 years. And that these people have pleased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way that they got the guarantee of Jannah in this dunya while they're walking on the face of the earth. What does that guarantee mean for them? They will still be good. But it's for the rest of us, the Sahaba, the rest of the Sahaba, and this is who you compare yourself. These are your role models, your examples that you go by. Right? That by knowing that they go to Jannah, then you should try to emulate them. Like, what's the point of us knowing that they go to Jannah? Like, what, how does it affect me and you in our daily lives? Like, that, that these are the people that, that they are role models in deen. They're the brightest stars in the galaxy of Sahaba anhum, that we should orientate our life to so we can have proper direction, right? Um, our deen, like, like the way we do our deen should be the way these people did their deen. So do you understand? Like, like the quality of our deen and the, 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 the loft, the himma that these people had and the efforts that they made. And you can see, I just read from one of them, you know, except from his life, like the state of mind of this Sahabi Saeed bin Zaid, who we don't talk about, but he's such an important person. He's one of the 10 that's promised Jannah, but the least known. But look at how he is, like his attitude, like he's being given rulership, conquest. And every day he comes out, he goes, I didn't do it for this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to, until he said like enough. And he sends a letter, I'm on my already. Didn't ask permission. He goes, I'm coming to you. You better send somebody here. That's enough. I can't do more than this. Like, this is too much, like just sitting in a palace and, you know, like, subhanAllah, like people die to be in a palace and die to be, get some position and die to collect wealth and have a high status and get the respect and adulation of communities and people look at them in different way, right? So just before we continue with the rest of Sahaba, radiallahu um, and our aqidah related to them, why it's so important, that understand who the Ashram of Ashram and Jalan Rasulullah didn't just tell us, just, it's, a, it's just an interesting fact, right? Here's an interesting fat, fact about these people that are going to Jannah. Like here's some nice, no, then you should pay attention to these people, how they live their deen. What were their days and nights like, right? If you want to... Um, there's a, you know, and even a, the four, right? The sunnah should be the sunnah that we should follow. The things that we should institute in the communities is that which the, 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 the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi did and the Khulafa Rashidin did as per the narration, right? I asked my father this, Rahmullah, like there's so many groups and so many things. How do I make, <laughs> like, how do you sort of find sort of like clarity in terms of moving forward? He goes, that which is to be established in the community should be looked, you should look at through the prism of the Khulafa Rashidin. Like what would Abu Bakr and Umar Uspan Ali radiallahu like try to, you know, have a lofty um, like understanding of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu in deen. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Um, and speak, uh, and speak with them with the best of term by the companions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly in Surah Fath, you can read those ayat. I'll just read the translation. I wouldn't read the Arabic. Allah was pleased with the believers when they were pledging allegiance with you by placing their hands in your hands under the tree and he knew what was in their hearts. So he sent down tranquility upon them, rewarded them with a the victory near at hand. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, a, is also in Surah uh, Fath. Uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a messenger of Allah and those who are with him are hard on the disbelievers, compassionate among themselves. You will see them bowing down in ruku, prostrating themselves in sajda, seeking grace from Allah and his good pleasure. Their distinguishing feature is on their face from the effect of sajda, prostration. This is their description in Torah and the description in Injil. So, um, sorry about that. Uh, this is the description in Torah and the description in Jil is like a sowing crop that brings forth its shoot and makes it stronger than it grows thick and stands straight on its stem, looking good to the farmers so that he may enrage the disbelievers through them. Allah has promised forgiveness and a huge reward for those of them who believe and do good deeds. In Surah Tawbah, as for the first and foremost of the immigrants, Muhajirin, and the supporters, the Ansar, and those who follow them in goodness, Allah is pleased with them and they're pleased with Allah and he has prepared for them gardens beneath which rivers flow where they will live forever. This is a supreme achievement. 
um, in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu said, do not, la tasubbu ashabi, do not abuse my companions. For if any of you were to cut, spend gold equal to Uhud in Allah's cause, it would not be equal to a mud or even a half a mud spent by a handful. Like you spend a mountain of gold, you will not equal to the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu a handful, right? Uh, one of them. Uh, Zir bin Hubaysh reported that Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, Verily Allah looked at the hearts of the servants and he found that the hearts of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa uh, was the best among them. So he chose him for himself and he sent him for his message. Then he looked at the hearts of the servants after Muhammad and he found that the hearts of his companions were the best among them. Thus he made them into his ministers of his, minister of his prophets, fighting for the sake of his religion. Whatever the Muslim view as good is good to Allah and whatever they view as evil is evil to Allah. Um, this hadith is uh, Imam Ahmad in his, his recording is uh, Muslim Imam Ahmad and uh, you know many ulama have said that hadith is Hassan um, so that's the um, regarding Sahaba radiallahu that they are the direct students so they're in, with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the direct companions of Rasulullah Allah chose them they're not just random people of this ummah they're specifically as Abdullah Masood radiallahu is saying that Allah looked in, among humanity chose these people specifically to be with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These two lines are there mentioned and there's variations of these mentioned. I looked at a few versions, they're all about roughly the same, um, but this is the one Dr. Mutlaq quotes and I think in the commentary of Ibn Banna, if I remember correctly, I think that's got these lines, uh, but there are variations of this, but this is not from Imam Ibn Abi Dawood. This is re related, added by other, just to complete this section of Sahaba radiallahu because there are, some Sahaba radiallahu um, that they are specifically attacked by the enemies of Sahaba radiallahu and the enemies of Islam, really. And Aisha, the mother of the, um, uh, sorry, astaghfirullah and Aisha, the mother of the believers and our uncle Muawiyah, honor him and confer and the helpers and immigrants from their homes with their help from the burning of the fire, they moved away. So Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu her bara is in the Quran regarding the incident of Ifik where the Munafiqeen accused her when she stayed back in the battle and the Sahabi brought in Makkah, the Munafiqeen took that opportunity to attack her reputation in the worst type of way a woman can be attacked. And um, she's the most criticized, right, out of the, um, so the Mubtadi'a insult, our mother, Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha, um, anybody that does that, anybody that engages in attacking, because the bara, her being um, absolved of any crime as she was totally innocent. A person who doesn't believe that she was innocent and accuses her or disrespects her when Allah has sent her, her innocence in the Quran, this person is a murtad, is a kafir because he's denying a direct nas of the Quran. And that's how it should be, as in Surah Nur, Allah sent her. Um, uh, so, um, and as for Sayyidina uh, Muawir, um, that uh, he, he's considered the first king in Islam and uh, Khilafah transferred from Ali to Hassan radiallahu anhu, and the 30 years was completed, the Khilafah of 30 years was completed um, and then he entrusted, he abdicated uh, and gave the hand of the Khilafah to Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. Um, and Sheikh al-Islam said that he was not a Khalifa so in the Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, this is an intermediate period, he was not a man, until um, the stepping down of Hassan radiallahu anhu, handing it over officially because Hassan radiallahu was legitimately the Khalifa. Uh, he was a, uh, then he was the Khalifa for 20 years until 60 after Hijrah and basically started the dynasty, din dynastic rule of the Banu Umayyah from 40 after Hijrah until 132 after Hijrah. Uh, with ending with Marwan ibn Muhammad and then the Abbasiyah came after in the rule for hundreds. Although the Banu Umayyah in a way, they continued in Spain. The Spain basic rulership of the Muslims there was by the Banu Umayyah still. Really, the strongest, most expansive the Muslims were, I'm not talking about taqwa, uh, were under the Banu Umayyah till they collapsed. They had the single direct rule over the majority of the Muslim lands right from Central Asia right up to Spain. They ruled like as a single unit um, under one ruler, one Khalifa. After that, you had more regional and a weaker. Although Abbasi existed, they were strong to a certain degree, but at the same time, you had other polities existing uh, and who acknowledged him as a Khalifa, but then they like didn't interfere with their local rulerships and they didn't de 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 decide on governors and so forth. Um, 
the the Rawafid, um, they hate him and curse uh, Sayyidina Mu'abi radiallahu He's from the Sahaba radiallahu firstly. That's sufficient to hold anybody. That is sufficient virtue. Uh, the, we know Ali radiallahu is greater, but that does not give permission for anyone to abuse, insult, let alone curse uh, or criticize Sayyidina Mu'abi radiallahu Um the door criticism of him is a door of to criticize and belittling Sahaba radiallahu. This is a door that that is the Ahl Sunnah al Jamaat keeps shut. Yazid, his brother, who was more senior, was in Sham. Uh, Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu. Not Yazid bin Muawiyah, Yazid bin Abi Sufyan, the brother, who was a senior Sahabi, and he was actually the governor. When his brother died, then he inherited, like it, it, it came to his lot, and the people of Sham loved him, right? And by Umar radiallahu anhu, the Khalifa's decision, um, the, um, in the Sham, the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, they, um, sorry, the people of Sham, they adored him and they united under him entirely. More than the people of Iraq did for Ali radiallahu anhu, Right? And the people of Sham were more um, forbearing and had were more sincere, especially to Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, than the people who claimed to be Shia to Ali. Shia to Ali mean the party, the group of Ali radiallahu When they didn't really, when it came to the crunch, they would, the Shia to Ali would always back out, right? The people who claimed to be the supporters of Ali, the same thing they did to Hussein radiallahu anhu, Karbala. Um, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, uh, too many virtues. Abu Zura rahmatullahi alayhi mentioned uh, that anybody that denigrates Sahaba radiallahu anhu is a zindiq, right? These are the people, because anybody that degrades Sahaba radiallahu anhu, any of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, because by criticizing Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, it opens up the door of criticizing all the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, belittling them. And anybody that does that is a zindiq, right? Um, because they are the people who transfer the deen to us, right? So what, you, what, what is, by closing this door of attacking Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, we're closing the doors of Ilhad. Because those who open this door, they attack. Once you criticize Sahaba radiallahu anhu, and there are people like this that talk like this, that they, they, they will attack the Quran while the Sahaba, this Sahabi may be added this ayat, this Sahabi may change. So it's like you're attacking this, the chain by which Sahaba transferred the Quran to us. Like you started taking Zayb bin Thabit or other Sahaba or Ubay bin Ka'ab or the, 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 the Quran, you know, the reciters of the Quran, the transfer, the, the, the Sanad of the Quran. All those who are narrating hadith of Rasulullah like we don't, as I mentioned last week, we don't, uh, critique Sahaba radiallahu anhu because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala vouched for them in the Quran. But once you put a doubt regarding Sahaba radiallahu anhu, then you're putting doubt on the two sources, primary source of Islam, the Quran and Sunnah, because they're the people who transferred that to us. So by attacking Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, attacking Muawiyah radiallahu anhu is a door to actually attacking the rest of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. And once you attack the rest of Sahaba radiallahu anhu, then uh, in general, then now you've attacked actually the Nusus, the sources, uh, the primary sources. So this door is to be uh, closed. There is some, I mentioned earlier about the Ta'if um, al-Baghiyah, the rebellious group, and there's explanations of this, elaborate, long explanations of this. Um, I'll see if I can, I'm just reading up one of the fatwas that's up. Yeah, how can Muawiyah radiallahu anhu be a mujtahid in the path of Allah and he has ajar? Um, you know, when his army, some people are saying a thing. He said, firstly, uh, there's a long answer for this. I think Sheikh Salim Munajid from Saudi Arabia, he answered this, if I'm correct, or somebody else had written this. I can't see the bottom of it. I'll get to them in a moment. Um, there is no hadith that says that the Jaish, the army of Muawiyah is the Baghi, the rebellious group. Right, that if you read the hadith, um, what it's referring to is that the people who kill him, right? All right, so he talks about the killers, right? And and the the fi'a, the group that will kill him, uh, they are the they are the rebellious group, right? Um, and so from that is understood, is Sheikh Al Islam Taymiyyah Rahmatullah explained that this most likely means. 
that the group, the specific subgroup, which I mentioned earlier, they're the ones, uh, which is one group, a subgroup within a ta'ifa from the army of Mu'abir Dilan, right? Um, and he said that Ammar bin Yasser, one of the commanders of Mu'abir Dilan, one of the senior uh, Sahabir Dilan alive at the time, who's like a leader and general, right? Fatih al Misr, the conqueror of Europe, built the first masjid in Africa, and on and on. And he said that they were not, even Mu'awir and Amr, they were very upset with the killing of Ammar ibn. So this is, shows you that they were not out for blood for any uh, Sahaba radiallahu and so forth, but they did take a stance regarding what they believed to be correct. Um, secondly, even if a person is a, a rebels, it doesn't take the person out of the fold of Islam, right? So this is even if you take that view. Um, Someone was standing next to Ammar ibn Yasir in Sifin, in that battle. His my knee was touching his knee, like we're standing shoulder to shoulder and knee to knee, like next to each other in fighting. And someone said, the people of Sham, the, the army of Mu'awir radiallahu they've made kufr, right? He said, Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu said, don't say that. Our Nabi and their Nabi is one. Our Qibla and their Qibla is one, right? Our uh, they are the one they have been put into trial and they've deviated and moved away from the truth. And because our job is that to fight them until they return to the truth. Right? So like they're not like if this is what we had to do to so they return back, then we have to do this. Um and And he said, when Ali radiallahu was asked about them, um, about Ashab, uh, uh, about Ashab Muawiyah, like the group of Muawiyah, the people of Ali asked about the group, about fighting. He said, and he said, they are mu'minun, they are believers. Right? So we can go on and on and on. And these, when you put all these narrations together from the straight, as the expression goes from the horse's mouth, directly from the source, from Ali radiallahu from Ammar bin Yasser, what their attitudes were. So when later people are doing takfir, na'uzu billah, on sahaba radiallahu or Mu'ab radiallahu then you better be very, very careful who you're talking about because the people that, that fought against them, they consider them mu'mineen, they consider that people that have been confused, they consider that it's still them, their brothers in Islam. And he goes, when even Mu'awir was asked, and as I mentioned earlier, he said that I'm fighting him for the blood of Osman. And he goes, I'll be the first one to make bayah to him. So he put this condition, right? That the, in the army of Ali Radiallahu, the killers of Osman, and he goes, uh, 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 his, uh, you know, his relatives. And he goes, how can we just go about our business normally? I'll make bayah to him. I'll accept him as a Khalifa right now on the condition that he hands over those killers that are hiding with them. Of course, that's not possible. How, when the blame is spread amongst many people and you don't, cannot pinpoint it, you can, how can you make, uh, do a, you know, like it was a deadlock, right? Like these things can happen, unfortunately, and you'll never know really what happened. Um, And Imams have explained this throughout centuries that uh, when uh, the Sahaba radiallahu anh, excluded from even this hadith of that when two Muslim kill, fight and one is killed, both are in the fire, there's all these sayings. So I just mentioned that because this is very important. And the, remember this, look at Mu'awir radiallahu anh, with the eyes that Rasulullah looked at him with, right? That Rasulullah loved him. He's the brother-in-law of Rasulullah sallam. That's why we call him Khal al-Ummah the uncle of the Ummah, because his sister is Ummah Habiba, radiallahu anha, she's one Mu'minin, he's the brother, so she's the mother of the believer, he's the uncle, maternal uncle of the Ummah. So we have to honor him. So we hold that tongue. Regarding Sahaba radiallahu in the entirety, we are think the sign of the deviated groups are that they will attack the, um, the honor of Sahaba radiallahu anhum, um, in some shape or form, in extremes. And I mentioned this last week about the al -Bayt. We love the, all the Sahaba, we love all al -Bayt. We don't demean in praising al -Bayt, the family of Rasulullah we demean Mu'awir and the Sahaba Then It's unnecessary why people go down this road where they're trying to get Shia on their side or whatever other group they're trying to get inside. This is not 
um, uh, people that Allah is pleased with, we don't have a position and to critique. I mean, we are very, very small people, insignificant people in the overall scheme of things to be critiquing companions of the Prophet Sallallahu and de- uh, to belittling them in the statements that we make, like trying to put something up or someone up, then we degrade and humiliate another. This is not on. This is not the way the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, right? As, uh, as in practice throughout history. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding and tawfiq to practice. May Allah put the love of Sahaba radiallahu in our life. May Allah make al maruman Habba a person who is one loves me, um, all the 10 Sahaba radiallahu in inshallah we meet them and that we with them on the Day of Judgment. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course, above all. Barakallahu feekum. Any questions? Inshallah.